Hello, boys and girls. Well, we're starting a new unit on myths, legends, and folk tales. And we're going to kick off our new unit with this story, Mufaru's Beautiful Daughters. It's a folk tale from Zimbabwe, which is, of course, a neighbor to Mozambique. And the author is John Steptoe. Now, something about a folk tale is that, in general, Folk tales don't really have an author. The stories are so old that we're not sure who came up with the first story. And folk tales were told long, long time ago before people could even read and write properly. Parents would tell it to their children and then the children would tell it to their children. And so it would be passed from one generation to the next. And as I said, it wasn't written down. It was generally done in spoken form. And this author, John Steptoe, took this ancient tale and created a book out of it. Now, as we read the story, I want you to think about something else that folk tales have in common. Usually folk tales were told to teach a lesson. So what lesson do you think is in this story? And then the other thing I want you to listen for is this story is similar to another popular story. I wonder if you can guess what that is. All right, let's start and maybe you can figure it out as we go along. So listen for the lesson and listen for the similarities to another popular story. Here we go. Mufaro's Beautiful Daughters by John Steptoe. A long time ago, in a certain place in Africa, a small village lay across a river and a half day's journey from a city where a great king lived. A man named Mufaru lived in this village with his two daughters, who were called Manyara and Nyasha. Everyone agreed that Manyara and Nyasha were very beautiful. Manyara was almost always in a bad temper. She teased her sister whenever their father's back was turned, and she had been heard to say, Some day, Nyasha, I will be queen and you will be a servant in my household. If that should come to pass, Inyasha responded, I will be pleased to serve you. But why do you say such things? You are clever and strong and beautiful. Why are you so unhappy? Because everyone talks about how kind you are and they praise everything you do. Manyara replied, I'm certain that father loves you best, but when I am queen, everyone will know that your silly kindness is only weakness. Inyasha was sad that Manyara felt this way, but she ignored her sister's words and went about her chores. Inyasha kept a small plot of land on which she grew millet, sunflowers, yams and vegetables. She always sang as she worked and some said it was her singing that made her crops more bountiful than anyone else's. One day Nyasha noticed a small garden snake resting beneath a yam vine. Good day little Nyoka, she called to him. You are welcome here. You will keep away creatures who might spoil my vegetables. She bent forward, gave the little snake a loving pat on the head, and then returned to her work. From that day on, Nyoka was always at Nyasha's side when she tended her garden. It was said that she sang all the more sweetly when he was there. Mufaro knew nothing of how Manyara treated Nyasha. Nyasha was too considerate of her father's feelings to complain, and Manyara was always careful to behave herself when Mufaru was around. Early one morning, a messenger from the city arrived. The great king wanted a wife. The most worthy and beautiful daughters of the land are invited to appear before the king, and he will choose one to become queen the messenger proclaimed. Mufaro called Manyara and Nyasha to him. It would be a great honor to have one of you chosen, he said. 
prepare yourselves to journey to the city. I will call together all our friends to make a wedding party. We will leave tomorrow as the sun rises. But my father, Manyara said sweetly, it would be painful for either of us to leave you, even to be wife to the king. I know Nyasha would grieve to death if she were parted from you. I am strong. Send me to the city and let poor Nyasha be happy here with you. Mufaro beamed with pride. The king has asked for the most worthy and the most beautiful. No, Manyara, I cannot send you alone. Only a king can choose between two such worthy daughters. Both of you must go. That night, when everyone was asleep, Manyara stole quietly out of the village. She had never been in the forest at night before, and she was frightened. But her greed to be the first to appear before the king drove her on. In her hurry, she almost stumbled over a small boy who suddenly appeared, standing in the path. Please said the boy. I am hungry. Will you give me something to eat? I've brought only enough for myself, Manyara replied. But please, said the boy, I'm so very hungry. Out of my way, boy. Tomorrow I will become your queen. How dare you stand in my path? Okay, that's part one. Hmm, I wonder what will happen next.